Hi guys, Adam Winch here um, with Defenders USA, and I'm lucky enough to be able to sit down here with Rick Hess. Uh, we just did a video with him. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch that one. But I want to talk to Rick Hess about something that he actually went through. Now, understand something. Rick here has done a lot of gun training in his life, right? He's thought through a lot of these different things that we're going to go into. Um, but uh, but uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to have him come. He's from the Western Slope, or I'm sorry, the Eastern Slope, the right. Front Range in the Denver area, kind of near Boulder and all. And he's been able to come out here to Grand Junction and go through some of our training. He's been through a Defender Series a couple times, uh, two or three times, I think. And a couple handgun courses, a long couple range of, precision. Our long range precision, a couple fighting rifle courses. Yep. And he's really developed the mindset and the situation awareness from right over his lifetime and in training. But he actually went through a pretty serious incident, a pretty scary incident that I wanted to lay out to you. Now, we've had the blessing, I would say, of training students to where we later hear that their training saved their life. I've got three or four other folks that I want to talk to where their training has literally saved their life and they're here today because of it. And in this case, this is the first time we get to sit down and talk to somebody who's actually, who's actually gone through this, who's been a, one of our students. And I want him to lay out some of this stuff and hopefully you can lay out not only what happened, the but context. maybe the context what happened, the setting. the setting, but also maybe the things you felt like you learned in it, mm -hmm. things you felt like you could do better in it, and things that you truly excelled in and or, or, or things that really worked well for you. So that maybe it's, this is educational for us, so we can learn from you through what you went through, if you're good with that. Yep. So first of all, before we do, if folks haven't seen the other video, do you mind just giving us a quick introduction uh, of My your? name is Rick Hess. I am happily retired. <laughs> I spent 35 years in the aerospace industry as a software architect, software developer, and I had a wonderful career, but I am so glad I'm done. I'll tell you what, guys, <laughs> he's being humble about this. He, he is, this is one smart genius, right? From like the rocketry, wizardry, science world. It's computer science. Okay, so. that side, okay? But dealing with like satellites and things like that. Spacecraft. So, spacecraft, okay. So tell us what happened. Okay, so the context is I live in the Boulder area, unincorporated Boulder County. I like to try to stay in shape. It was last year, we had just gone into lockdown. It was probably- From the COVID. From the COVID. Okay. It was late winter, early spring. So I was dressed in running shorts and a long sleeve shirt and my you know running shoes. And I have a set path that I usually follow. Right. I have a, uh, a five mile run okay. that I usually do. And I try to do it twice a week or at least <sighs> once a week athlete and you know before I go out on a run I always take my gun and it goes into my left pocket because I shoot left-handed and I put two magazines in my in my right pocket and I always try to have the frame of mind of I say a prayer keep me safe have a good run etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you know, it was it was a very pleasant day. And so can I stop you there? Right. What kind of gun were you carrying and how were you carrying it besides just in the pocket? So I carry, when I'm doing something like that, I carry a Springfield Armory 911 and 380. I carry it in a DeSantis pocket holster okay. that has got Velcro on the outside okay. so it sticks to the pocket. Uh, I've practiced with it quite extensively. I've at least put almost a thousand rounds through that gun. Yep, I've seen it. And uh, it's, you know, I can acquire the sights very quickly. It's got a wonderful trigger pull. It's got the 1911 battery of arms. So I'm always reminding <laughs> myself, if you draw the gun, remember the safety, the safety. You got to take the safety off. So, so just to decide, I've tried to talk him out of this gun. It's a great little gun but I haven't won the war with him. He's too smart for that. <laughs> I just like how it shoots. Yes, yeah, it's a great shooter. So, And you train so much with it that you've myelinated the, 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 the neuron pathways to work that gun well. For a right. lot of folks, that can be a confusing gun, but in the hands of an expert who trains with it so much, not just in, on the range, but dry fire too. Right. I mean, it, you, you do magic with that gun. It, you know, and this incident, just to kind of leap ahead, if there was one grace, I had the grace of time. 
because it didn't happen super fast. Oh, good. Okay. I had time to think about it. So anyway, I, I start off on my run, and I'm running along, <laughs> and this guy on an electric bike comes in the opposite direction, and he brushes right by me. Okay. Almost touches me. Which is odd. Which is odd. Well, usually we give each other right. space. Which, you know, you like, yeah. And he didn't. And uh, I had a mask on at the time. And he didn't. So I said, you know, you should wear a mask <laughs> just, to give him a, just to give him a hard time. So did that right there, did that little cue, because, I mean, that's odd. That's different. Did that set off any alarm bells? Or did it just kind of tick you off? Uh I thought it was odd, but I'm a live and let live kind of guy, okay. so I didn't pay it any mind. But then he comes back. He circled back, and he's riding behind me, and now he rides to the side of me, and I stopped, and he stops, and so we're on the, we're on the. How far this, apart were you? Okay, so we were probably, we were probably about three to five yards apart. So okay, okay. We were, we were fairly close, and he was on the, let's see. So when I stopped, I was on the eastern side of the trail. And so he kind of catty corners to me, and he goes, what did you say to me? And so at that point, I walked to the opposite side of the trail and got behind him. And so he had this big electric bike. So he had a kind of boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. Okay. So I don't know if I did that naturally or if I was thinking about it, but I was thinking about already putting him at a disadvantage. So you were moving offline, even around and behind him. Right. So tactically, you're going, okay, this head on is not a good idea. Right. Okay. So good. Yeah. So I moved behind him. So he's on this big electric bike and he, Bang, 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 yeah. bump, 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 bump. And then he goes, what'd you say to me? <laughs> so he's bowed up already. Right, he is. And do he, you feel like your words to him set him off, or do you think it was just that dude who's already angry at the world and he's just looking for trouble somewhere? I think he had a, had had a bad day, and he was pissed off at the world, okay. and I triggered him. Okay, okay. And it was like road rage, but it was on a bicycle, on well, an electric bike. It, it sounds like he was looking for something because, I mean, he purposely brushed up against right. you. It's not like he was wobbly from what you're saying. No. That, that was a purposeful thing. Right. Just to let you know I'm here and maybe I'm the alpha here. Right. I'm okay. cool. You're not. Okay. And the kid was, he was probably about 22, and he was bolder cool. I mean, he had on a meme t-shirt, and he had a little cue back here, mm -hmm. and he had granny glasses, sunglasses. And he was ripped. I mean, he was a big dude. So big, strong guy. Big, strong so guy. So how, how, how do you say would he compare to you? Was he 5'10", 20 pounds, 50 pounds over? I would say he was like 6'1", and he was probably 35 pounds heavier than me. Okay, so how tall are you? I'm 5'7". Okay, so there's a height difference. There's also an age difference. You said he's ripped. Right. Um, and it looks like he's kind of bowing up to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Okay. he is. And so... I got behind him and he goes the dump, 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 dump. <laughs> and now he's looking at me and he says, you know, what'd you say to me? <laughs> and I said, I said, get a mask. And he goes, why should I do that? And I said, you know, because you know, we're under COVID right now. And he looks at me again and he goes, I'm going to fuck you up. Really? That's exactly what he says. And he began to dismount off the bike. So as, you know, at the outset, at the onset of the incident, I had taken my left hand and it was in the pocket and it was on the butt of the So gun. understand something for those talking here, right? Rick is left-handed, okay? Right. Okay, so you're dominant hand. Left, I shoot left-handed. Okay. And uh, so the, the hand is in the pocket, it's on the butt of the gun, and I'm saying to myself, don't forget the safety. Don't forget the safety. <laughs> no. And so he begins to get off the, the bike. And I, I looked at him and I said, I have a gun. And he goes, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so I backed up another three yards and I repeated myself. I said, I really have a gun. And the hand was, you know, it's in, yeah. the, left, it, it's in the left pocket. 
And at that point, the draw stroke begins. So at this point, if you went back another three yards, you're already three to five yards. I'm about seven, so I'm seven to eight yards seven away. Seven to eight yards away, okay. Right. okay. So I've got, I've, and so realize this whole time, I've got the gift of time, I've got the gift of distance. Right, which is rare to get that much distance. Right. And that much, oh, I don't know, pre-knowledge that somebody's coming at you. Not only that, he articulated what he was going to do to you. Right. Okay. And, you know, I, I spoke to my daughter once about this, and she said he probably wouldn't have beaten you up. And I said, no, he was coming for me. So you could see it. You believed it based on your right. unreasonables, his articulation, right. and the disparity of force already right. between the two of you. I was not about to take a beating from a 22-year-old. Okay. okay. So you begin the draw stroke. What happens? <laughs> he stops so suddenly he almost falls over. Did he see the gun or did he just never, the movement? He just saw the movement. Okay. He never saw the gun. And he still had some doubt. And so I backed up some more, you know? And he goes, he started cursing at me. And I just looked at him and I didn't say another word. And then. Why not? Did you not want it to escalate or yeah, just you're trying just, to calm it right, down with silence? You know, I didn't have anything else to say to him. Okay. I mean, the, the gun was there. I was in a superior position I was going to be able to defend myself and if I had to I was going to stop this kid okay okay so so you felt fully justified if it came to it and he came at you I was going you to felt stop that him. you were you would have been justified to use the gun yes okay given the disparity of size given the age difference yeah okay okay so at this point he starts cursing at me and then he goes I'm gonna get you and I said bitch I'm right here right now. Oh, <laughs> you did it. You did, did it. I said that. Oh, <laughs> don't do that. No. <laughs> okay, go okay. on. All right. And so he took off. So it's, it's so kind of coming up in you now. The right. monster's coming up. Right. Yeah. Okay. So he took off. And uh, so then I dialed 911 and I reported that I had an incident on the trail and I described what happened. And the, the sheriff's department never really came out. Okay. Because nothing happened. Okay. The gun never came out. Okay. Okay. So and, no. And, and there was no okay. exchange of blows. So any repercussions uh, beyond that, right? You said SO or sheriff's office never really came out. Did it, you end up talking to them on the phone or anything? Describing it more to a deputy? I spoke to dispatch. And uh, then I went home and took a shower. And while I was taking a shower, the sheriff's deputy called me. And I missed the call. And he said, basically, do you have anything further to report? And I was like, and he gave me his number. And I never had to call them back because nothing ever came of it. OK. Now, um, what are lessons learned for you that you'd like to tell folks? What changed for you? So, <laughs> That's my phone going off. Okay. Should I'll, I, should I'll, I, I'll grab it. We can mute okay. it. You go to that? Right. I'm just going to hang up on them. I'm sorry. So. Intermission. All right. So I decided I wanted a bigger gun than a 380. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good call. So I bought a compact 45 from Springfield Armory, and I'm going to wear it in a chest rig when I go running. Okay. Okay. Uh, the what other kind thing, of chest rig are you going to wear? A uh, uh, Kenai. So the ones that go right, right here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gunfighter rig. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, I'm a lot more aware of my surroundings now. I pay attention much more, and it's bled over into everything when I'm at the grocery store, when I'm, you know, going to pick up mail, when I'm running an errand. I'm always cognizant of my surroundings, especially when I get out of the car, when I get into the car. I mean, if it's late at night and I'm getting out of the car, I'm in an apartment complex, I'll scan, open the door quickly, get out, I'll scan again. 
just to make sure that there's no one around that's com w that might be coming at me. So, so far you're saying, okay, this changed how you're going to carry the gun, even the gun you're going to carry, even the caliber. Um, but also, and knowing you, you're already a very alert type of person, right? Even this incident heightened your awareness what goes around around most you. definitely you know and I, I found this oftentimes right in the police world and even in things that have happened to me that is people become the victims of crime or an incident hopefully never a bad one in this case it didn't turn bad for you after you've become the victim of a crime all of a sudden people's situational awareness goes way up right it's like, like getting pulled over by a cop right you get pulled over by a cop for the next at least three weeks or so, you're careful behind the wheel. Right. Same thing here. Do you feel like that situation awareness has degraded over time, or is it? have you kept it about there? I think I've kept it about there, and the key is continued training, supervised training, and Adam does a wonderful job, and so I come out here to Grand Junction on a regular basis. Yeah. I have the means to do so and the time to do so, so and it's not just about me and the gun, it's also about my church congregation. And if anyone was to ever come into our congregation with, a, with an AR or an AK, I feel like I could successfully engage them. Well, having seen you shoot, I would tend to agree. You know, what? you kind of went somewhere I hadn't thought of, um, but to me it comes down to mindset, right? It's not just training with the physical gun, or guns that you use. I mean, that's great, that's one small component, but to me, always the most important is this, right? Getting the, the mental, the heart, the emotional solid, right? And, and then also thinking through, if this happens, then I'll do that, but if it's this way, I'll do that. Do you feel like having done those, and I know we do that in our courses, we mm -hmm. talk through this, we, we really push this. Do you think that was, because that's a lifestyle you tend to live, has that been helpful? Do you think that's part of what helped you really survive this incident? So, I believe so. You know, when you go out into the world and you're a concealed carry holder, you have a responsibility not only to yourself but everybody around you that you be the very, very best that you can be yeah. with a gun. And I always try to adopt a frame of reference, that sheepdog frame of reference, that I'm not only here for myself but I'm also there for the people around me that if something bad were to happen that I could stop it. So to me this is the crux of what we're we try to do at Defenders or at least the way I see it is developing that Defenders heart set that Defenders or defensive mindset Right, because yes, you need to defend yourself, right? You don't deserve bad things to happen to you. You deserve to live. I mean, you just deserve that. At the same time, if you've become that concealed carry holder, I think you touched on it well, is that you have that moral, ethical, legal responsibility to stay fresh with your training, as or even more importantly, stay fresh with the mentality of yep. it maintain that situational awareness or the awareness of your environments around there to where if something changes and it doesn't feel right, doesn't smell right, doesn't seem right, doesn't something, paying attention to that and then responding accordingly to where you don't either overuse force or underuse force that is also both legal but also common sense good. And ethical and moral at the same time. Yeah, yeah, ethical and moral. I mean, uh, to me that, that that's, to me, it just makes me so proud to know you, to be able to have worked with you, to mm -hmm. see that development. It's a lot of fun. Oh, it's a blast. <laughs> but it's also a serious thing. It is. Because if you don't have all the key components beyond just the bang of the gun, mm -hmm. uh, really the bang of the gun can be a true liability to you, yes. or a detriment to you, mm -hmm. put you in a box in a cage somewhere yep. because you didn't think these things through. And you having developed that mentality of the, a true defender, I mean, that, that to me is just, that's special. The one thing that I'm most proud of from that incident was that I was able to command the kid with my voice and I did not have to draw the weapon. So you're saying that you put on a commanding, a, really a, um, a, uh, a strong posture? Oh yeah. Not, not just in posture, but also in tone of voice. Yep. Can we say that comes from confidence and training and thought process? Absolutely. Okay. So you had confidence in what you were gonna do you were thinking through what you were going to do. Yep. 
Did you feel like at some point your mind kind of went blank or you're just like, hey, I'm thinking through this? You know, it's, it was a very surreal experience in that I felt like I was outside my body watching myself go through these actions, this whole process, and it was almost like I was observing myself in action. And everything okay. just happened step by step, automatically. It just, it was like I was reading from a script, but it, I, I was acting it out and it just all happened. So we do a lot of if then drills, pre-prep, pre-thought in the training we do. Do you feel like, cause you've done that, you've been in our training, mm -hmm. is it because you've kind of thought before, hey, if this happens, I'll do this, and if it's this, and then therefore that automation, as you're talking about, mm -hmm. came from the pre-planning ahead of time? Abs uh, very much so. And every time I go out, I'm always looking at the situation, where I am, and where a threat might appear from, and what I what I can do to uh, oppose that threat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a defender here. I mean, he took some pretty heroic actions. I'd say there's one or two things you probably shouldn't say. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I was I was pretty. I was I, at that point. <laughs> The adrenaline had kicked in and I was beginning to have the shakes. But at the same time, at the same time when you're like, come at me, right? Or however it is you said that, at the same time, you're giving, you're showing him confidently, hey, I'm the big bad lion you don't realize you just took on. Yep. Right? And I would say in many cases, bad guy in this case is like, whoa, never mind. Right? Could we have said a little bit better? Yes. Yeah. Had it turned into I shooting? Kept had it turned into shooting, those words could be something that some attorney is going to come after you, either in a criminal process or a civil yeah. process. But at the same time, it commandingly let this guy know, hey, this hand's in the right position for a gun, so therefore it probably looks like a gun. Right. But my attitude, my mindset was even like, you, you're coming at me? Bring it. Yep. And that probably gives pause to some dude going, I was, wait a minute, I, I don't want to... I don't want to absorb a little bit of lead because that doesn't feel good. No, it does not. Well, I got to tell you, I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad to hear this. <laughs> this is something that we've talked about a couple different times over over the time, and I, I can't tell you how proud I am of you to to know one more one more person that that has really built themselves up through through mental and emotional and physical training over time, seeking out good stuff and then building it in yourself to where ultimately you could possibly be here today because of that. It's true. That is so cool. Because I think he would have put me in the hospital or killed me. It banged up pretty good. Oh, his hands were just, they were huge. <laughs> Mitts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, boys and girls, just wanted to bring, uh, introduce you to Rick here. And I just, I thought his story was pretty interesting. I found a few details here as we're talking that I didn't know before. Uh, but uh, just, just understand a good internal mental preparation good training can help you survive in the instant and the addendum of adding the physical training with the tools you use whether it's a knife a gun a stick a, a something or just your empty hand techniques through jujitsu boxing wrestling whatever it is right or your less less than lethal tools like pepper spray something like that i mean spending time thoughtfully training in those things helps prepare you for those incidents, right? Especially when you sit there and go, okay, if it happens this way, then I'm going to do this. But if it goes this way, I'll do that. Because if you learn these things ahead of time and make decisions ahead of time, when that moment comes, and unlike Rick, who had some real time to think this through, right? If it goes quickly, oftentimes that automation happens. And it just, like he said, a script, he's reading it. And uh, though it seems like you had a lot of time, I'll bet you in this incident it was actually over pretty quickly. It's probably 10 seconds. Really? Yeah. Oh, you didn't have as much time as I thought. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Um, a lot of you heroes out here just like Rick. And uh, we'd love to talk to you, especially if you've been through something like this. And for our students who've been through Defender stuff, we would love to interview you about some of this stuff so others can hopefully learn through from what you went through and then the changes that came out of what you went through. So once again, thank you so much, Adam with Defenders and Rick, Rick Hess. Take care. Thanks, God bless Adam. you. Yes, sir. Appreciate and everything. Thank you, sir. Boys and girls, train thoughtfully. Train thoughtfully. Take care. Bye now.